Hi, welcome to the next of our series of many lectures. We've been studying Gaussian beams for a while, and we've gone over a very quick mathematical derivation, uh, learned about how several uh, parameters describe a beam and how beams propagate. And what we're going to cover today is how beams are affected by an optical system. So if you put a laser beam through a lens or system of lenses, you know what the laser beam does after that system and can continue to do calculations about it. And this is actually very important for beam manipulation say in the context of building optical tweezers. So for a little bit of review here, um, we have our generic equation we've worked with for some time about the electric field profile of a Gaussian beam in terms of x, y, and z, where x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And we should be fairly familiar with this. This is a fairly long equation that has a amplitude term, a longitudinal and a transverse phase term. And we've seen that rather than work with this equation directly, really all the information we need are given by three parameters. The uh, Rayleigh range of the beam, which is where it goes from being pencil-like or traveling in a completely straight line to where it starts to spread out. The uh, waist of the beam, or the 1 over E point in radius as a function of distance. And the radius of curvature of the phase front which is going to be plane waves near a beam waist and turn into spherical expanding phase fronts far away from the beam waist. And these three parameters really describe fairly well our, our Gaussian beam, and that's really all we need to know if we're working with a Gaussian beam in free space and know what the waist and the wavelength are. You may remember uh, back when we were doing the derivation, we derived a Q parameter, and we sort of dropped that, but now we need to bring it back and the Q parameter is defined to be this, where we have uh, 1 over Q is given by this equation here. And we have both the real, which is in blue, and an imaginary part, which is in red, to this Q parameter. And it turns out that we can take our theory of ABCD matrices, we developed with ray matrices and, and working with rays, and apply it to the Q parameter. So let's see how that works. Um, we have our complex beam parameter, Q. And if we know the radius of curvature, and we know the beam waist and the wavelength, we can calculate what Q is with a real part and an imaginary part, as shown right here. And uh, this can be at the waist of the beam, or it can be at any point in space. We've given it in its more generic form as a function of Z there. Um, and it turns out, and I'm going to offer this without proof, that if we pass a beam through an optical system, the Q parameter on the output of the optical system is given by this equation right here. This is what relates the input Q to the output Q. So let's see exactly what we mean at this point. The input to our optical system, remember, is at some plane. For an ABCD matrix, we have to have an input plane and an output plane. And we define a waste radius and phase radius of curvature at the input plane right there. So we have some Wn and Rn. And we take these things, and we simply plug the values we have into this equation right here. And this equation returns Qn. The Q on the output plane, and let's choose a different color to represent the output plane. How about blue? Uh, here's the output plane of the system right here. The Q parameter on the output plane is simply C plus D over Q divided by A plus B over Q, as shown in this formula right here. This gives us 1 over Q out. Of course, with 1 over Q out, all we have to do is put Q out into this equation. And Q out is going to have a real part and an imaginary part. The real part of Q out gives us this. The imaginary part of Q out gives us this. So from Q out, we can calculate the radius of curvature and the waist at the output of the optical system. Um, of course, ABDC, ABCD matrices are complicated things, but remember, you can describe any optical system as a single ABCD matrix by multiplying the matrices of the elements together in the right order. And so this is really a very powerful technique um, and just involves calculating the input Q, running it through the equation, breaking the resultant output Q into its real and imaginary parts, and then doing some simple algebra to get the radius and the waist from that. And again, what this gives us 
is the waste at the output plane. Of course, if you have multiple optical systems, it's fairly easy just to multiply the matrices together and calculate whatever you need from there. So it's really a very powerful technique. Um, one problem you're going to run into, and I wouldn't say problem, but one challenge you're going to run into is that optical systems, of course, redefine the beam waste. Uh, you put a beam through a lens or an optical system, and the waste changes. And it may be as drawn here, and let's go back to my red pin. It may be as drawn here that, in fact, the beam's going to come, go through a new minimum waste, and spread out again. It's changed by that optical system. And one of the, the frequent challenges you have is wanting to know, OK, great. I want to go through an optical system, have a new waste, and then recalculate again how my beam is going to go from there. Say if you put in some system to change your beam to get it to a target far away or something like that. How do I know what this new W naught of the beam is? Because we have a new W naught, a new minimum beam waste redefined by the optical system. And that may be at some distance Z from the output of the optical system. And we want to know what Z and W naught are. Well, 